today I want to talk about how this guy wrote and implemented the most significant gun reform in over a decade. And no, that is sadly enough not clickbait. The year 2018, Trump was president and the Las Vegas shooting had just happened. You see, a guy had parked himself up in a hotel, slapped a bump stock on a semi-automatic rifle to increase its rate of fire, and then killed almost 60 people. You know what Trump did? Well, he banned all bump stocks. Did he get congressional approval to do this? <laughs> Have you met the guy? Of course not. He just sort of YOLO'd out an executive order on a whim and let the lawyers figure out where all the pieces were supposed to fall. In fact, the executive branch actually took a good hard look at congressional intent regarding bump stocks and then decided to take a hard 180 and do the exact opposite of that. You see, right before Trump had signed this banned bump stocks executive order, lawmakers in at least 30 states had introduced legislation to ban bump stocks themselves, which converts semi-automatic guns into automatic weapons like the ones that were used by the Las Vegas gunmen. Well, that bill, it predictably failed almost immediately. Instead, the Justice Department just sort of looked at the existing laws on the books and then reinterpreted its own legal authority and determined that it did, in fact, have rights to ban those devices after executive actions were signed by President Trump to tell it to find a way to prohibit them earlier that year. Of course, following that mass shooting. Now that is how we got the bump stock ban that we currently have today. We gotta work through Congress, or devil on the other shoulder, maybe if you have a lawyer with a minor in creative writing leading the DOJ, sort of instruct them to find a law that they can maybe reinterpret to suit you and then follow that road instead. Now this Trump executive order was the ultimate legal low hanging fruit for any politician who would have bothered to actually go out into the garden and try to pick a piece of low hanging fruit. Basically, for the purposes of understanding this, there are two classes of guns. You got your machine guns, bad. Pull the trigger once, hold it down, and bullets keep on flying out. Then you got semi-automatic weapons, good. You pull the trigger and each time you want to fire another shot, you gotta pull it again. Da 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 da. Gotta pace yourself a bit. Now the federal government, not a big fan of machine guns. Banned sales or transfers of them after 1986. Semi-automatic weapons on the other hand, da 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 da. Well those weapons, totally fine as far as Uncle Sam is concerned. You got a problem? Take it up with your state. Now what the bump stock did was just sort of shake the heck out of an automatic weapon so that you could hold down your finger and the trigger would keep bumping into it. Da, 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 da. Firing rapid, increasingly inaccurate shots. Not good if you want to hit something, but very good if you want to send a lot of bullets in a general direction very quickly. Now the Trump administration looked at this whole situation and told the ATF, guys, look, these bump stocks are making semi-automatic weapons, pull each time, into automatic weapons, hold it down and jiggle around and the trigger pulls itself. You gotta treat bump stocks like they're machine guns and ban them. There was a period of time set where you could either destroy or return this bump stock modification. After that, possession became a crime. With that swipe of a pen from Donald Trump himself, the executive branch had unilaterally banned a new type of weapon, for the purposes of protecting Americans from gun violence for the first time in flippin' decades. So why doesn't Biden just copy and paste this executive order strategy? Well, two major reasons. First, just the glaring difference between administrative strategies. You see, when I picture the Trump and Biden administrations, I imagine two people drowning. One's just thrashing around and trying to stay above water, and the other has sort of more resigned himself to the fact that all that moving isn't really going to keep him afloat. So might as well just hope there's a lifeguard or some sort of flotation device around. Name a political issue and Trump has about 20 executive orders for 95% of them. Of course, most of them were dead on arrival. I mean, half of the 2020 Supreme Court's docket was someone v Trump. 
but that dude's attorneys were consistently splashing up a storm. Rest in peace that short lived prescription drug price cap. Now for him, it was just 4 years of throwing stuff at the wall to see what stuck. Muslim ban, unauthorized emergency wall funding, ending DACA, not all winners of course, but man that wall was packed with stuff. Now unfortunately with this strategy, very little sticks to the wall at the end of the day, and even the stuff that does might dry up and eventually fall off. Take for example this very bump stock ban. You see, the Supreme Court was initially blocking injunctions and keeping this idea stuck to the wall. Recently though, a court of appeals decided that Trump actually lacked the executive authority to redefine a machine gun, and more specifically, wrote that a bump stock does not fall within the statutory definition of a machine gun. So yes, in a few months, depending on how the appeals process goes for this case, bump stocks might be returning to shelves again. Now unfortunately for gun control advocates out there, well the newest interpretations of administrative law that are coming from the highest court in the land, the supreme court, seem to revolve a lot more around executive branch people not getting very creative with their interpretation of congressionally passed law. Instead, the new law of the land really seems to be stick strictly to congressional interpretations of the law when it comes to enforcing the rules that they passed. Go around congress and there's a court goal line defense that's waiting for you. No one like Trump, Biden really, really, really seems a lot less willing to lay it all out there and let the lawyers figure out where it all goes later. There's little sense that the White House is preparing new executive actions on gun control. Now this whole part of the conversation brings us to the other reason Biden might not take unilateral action. Even if he were to act, the remaining legal low hanging fruit is somewhat less groundbreaking than banning all bump stocks. No new guns to ban unless laws change or you get really, really, really creative with your legal interpretations in a way that the supreme court probably won't like. Now, The mess Biden has on the table right now is broadening the definition of individuals under federal law engaged in the business of selling firearms. Such a change could allow the United States government to crack down on unlicensed sellers and prevent certain bulk purchases of firearms. Sounds probably like maybe a baby step, but still a step in the right direction. Still, Biden might consider doing that eventually if congress doesn't do something first. He's not really chomping at the bit. Trump's level of political risk tolerance is not present with this administration. So it seems like the executive branch is probably not going to be the way out of this problem, or depending on your political perspective, not a problem. They're not gung ho about doing something here. That leaves this issue up to congress or individual state legislators. Until next time, thank you and that's all I have to say about that. Hello YouTube, I'd like to thank my patrons over here for helping me put out my videos. If you want to support independent non-partisan news looking into the overlooked, join this growing list of exceptional individuals by clicking on that link in the description. Also remember to like if you like what you saw, ring that bell so that freedom will continue to ring. Lastly, as always, thank you for watching.